We're going to be giving a mission report here of our trip to Paraguay um, that we had uh, last few weeks, and it was an amazing trip. But I just want to take my hat off to the church for a great job for carrying on since uh, we were gone. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for you. Amazing, amazing work that you guys are doing while we were away. And you know what? To God be the glory. Amen. Glory be to his name, for he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you know, yes, last night we were at the Youth Praise Night, and I want to tell you, I was overwhelmed by what God had been doing in that service with our youth, the amount of skills and talents that they, and, and sacrifice and practice that they put together to put that program together. I was blessed. Let's put our hands together for our young people. And Sister Carmen and her team, Colleen, Shelley, Sister Heather, for doing an amazing job. Well, I know, you know, while we were away, I missed you. <laughs> I missed you guys. Uh, and uh, I'm so, you know, when we when we touched down and I saw Marsha and the kids, I heard the kids uh, saying, hey, Dad, in the car. And, and it was so good to be home. There's no place like home. Amen? Come on, sister. You're, you're standing right beside me. This, this lady, I learned so much about her on this mission trip. She's not staying in the closet no more. She's, she's coming out today. Come on, pray, pray her out of the closet today. <laughs> I called, we were so comfortable, I called her Merelda the whole, the whole time. Merelda, what's going on? <laughs> but she came back, she said, make sure you call me Sister David. <laughs> I don't know, Merelda, I'm feeling comfortable with you right now. <laughs> we had an amazing time. It was awesome. And uh, I don't know how it's going to go in terms of us talking about it. It's going to be so much to share, but we do have some slides. What I'll do, Sister Davy, is I'll go first, and then when we get to your week, I'll let you talk a bit what the Lord has put on your heart. How's that sound? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead. So we got the slides up. We can go ahead and uh, put that up. But um, as you know, we went away to Carapegua, Paraguay, um, to support a mission uh, down there that's been going on for about 20 years. Dan Miller and his wife Gwen have left uh, Collingwood to live in, 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 in Carapegua for over 20 years. And the, normally missionaries, when they go to this place, they don't survive. They don't last in terms of they get burnt out and they leave. And so when, when God was sending them to this, um, this location, they realized the challenges that were ahead of them in order to make it work um, and even the financial challenges and the support weren't there but the Lord opened up doors very early to, to confirm in them that this is where God wanted them to, to be and so uh, we were able to uh, be a part of that journey 20 years later to meet Dan and Gwen and uh, see the work that they're doing and when we went it's it's a camp it's a beautiful camp that has been built um, to cater to children and youth and to different programs in the community. It is so recognized that the government uh, sends children, kind of like CES and the foster program here, they actually send children to Dan and Gwen uh, to have them being raised up there and they get love and care and, and all that stuff there. One of the children that, that uh, came to him 20 years ago or less than 20 years ago uh, came from a very broken home Abusive, abusive home and when it was so bad that the mother and father said to this little girl that there's no good coming out of her and uh, and uh, you know she had some challenges physically and all that but Dan and Gwen received this little child loved this little child and let 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 her know the love of God through um, the tender care that they brought gave her food gave her shelter gave her purpose and, and uh, Dan noticed at an early age how intelligent this girl was. And so he started, school there goes up to grade six. And then after grade six, you know, they, they just hang out and see what's happening there. You know, it's not like, a, it's not built up in that area where we were. It's like in this era where it's civilized with a lot of industry and opportunity for jobs. And so once you're finished school, you're, you're kind of hanging around the house helping with chores and whatever. And if you don't, kind of have some sense of purpose you kind of wave, waver along and, and, and just uh, float along into whatever 
happens. You know, the homes there that, that they had were very uh, poor places and stuff like that. And um, so don't go through the pictures. I'm going to walk you through the pictures. So go back to the beginning there. Um, so so um, the, the, uh, the, the, this, this girl, he noticed in, in early age, she was doing very well in school. And she, to the point that she was getting good marks. So, you know, eventually um, he said, you know what, I'm going to pay for the rest of your school because you got to pay for school when you get to the older grades. And, and, and then eventually um, she did, you know, very well to the point that um, she is now in university in Brazil to pursue her doctorate, uh, to be a doctor. And I'm going to be a surgeon. Thanks you for the correction. Yeah, to be a surgeon. And um, she is like, he looks at that and he's saying, wow, God. I just started loving her. And then out of this love, her confidence, her purpose, her calling started to develop. And here she is on her second year in university going to be a surgeon. Come on now, tell me that doesn't touch your heart. And, and this is why God called them, Gwen and Dan, to Paraguay to touch kids, to touch lives. And that's just a small piece of the puzzle. There's so much more going on in Paraguay. I was tremendously moved by that. And so we have some pictures here. Is that the first slide? Yeah. Okay, so so um, this year, this picture here is the when we got there, it took us about took me about twenty-four hours travel time to get to Paraguay from when we woke up to the, the, the airport in Canada Pearson and, and we and I went, hit my so um, I woke up, I got to the airport at three thirty for a six o'clock flight. Friday morning, and I put my head on the pillow in Paraguay at 3.45 in the morning. So that's 24 hours travel um, in terms of getting to Paraguay. And it, it was exhausting. By the time um, we got to bed and woke up, that Sunday um, was our Sunday, and, and we just got up and, and uh, had our breakfast and, and went to church. And so this is the Church of God of Prophecy in Paraguay. So uh, that's Dan. That's missionary Dan, and he is um, um, the pastor there, the co-pastor there with the uh, pastor Georgia Gregory. I can't remember his name. Yeah, pastor, one of the pastors there um, with him there, um, pastoring the church. So um, we went to church that that Sunday, and we had a U.S. group, a U.S. church that got a prophecy from Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, and and they brought about twenty plus people, twenty two people, and a mixture of of all different folks, young people, um, uh, couples, men, a lot of men. And they came that Sunday with us to church. And Pastor Don was the one that brought the word for that Sunday. And when we walked into that church, it wasn't a lot of us there in terms of from the, the, the immediate community. A lot of them there. But, but the few that were there, it just felt like home. You know, you're in a strange country. And you're walking around strange buildings. But then you walk into this place and it felt home. That's the way it felt. When we, it felt like I was back at Abundant Life. It just, it just felt like the welcome, the, the presence of the Lord was there, and we just, we just give God praise for what he was doing. We had a wonderful time. So you can see here, that's, that's some of the folks here in the front from, from, um, from the uh, Church of God of Prophecy in Detroit, this location. You can see the lady in the green. This is, um, this is uh, Jesse. Jesse. And her husband, um, Stephen, they've been serving in Paraguay for two years. And uh, they, they have committed their lives for two years to serve in Paraguay as missionaries to help this church and to teach English to, to, to these kids and to help the music ministry, worship ministry in the Paraguay church. And so this is their, this is their last month, August, in Paraguay. And they're moving back to New, Jer New North Carolina um, this month in September. So she was a great inspiration, her husband. So let's go to the next slide. So, so you can see her leading worship here. We'll go through. So we're, we're, we're singing in Spanish. The words, some of the words we don't know, but, but we're all singing and worshiping God in the spirit. We can keep going. Some more pictures there. Going. Uh, at the end of the service, we took pictures. There's a lady here that, that, um, blessed and, and we just uh, took some pictures keep going from the church of god 
This is um, Sante. So this is a guy I want you to pay close attention to because we're going to come back to him. But um, that service, I connected with uh, Santiago uh, in the center there. And I, I asked him, he speaks Spanish, but a little bit of English. So it was, we had an interpreter there to help us understand. And he was telling me his story. He's the pastor's son. Um, and he was telling me a bit of his story, how he came to God. He grew up in the church, but he fell away, got into drugs, got into satanic worship. But the Lord delivered him, and he's back, um, you know, in the church working. And, and he's not, he, there's still issues that he's working through, but, but God, I can see his heart, and I can see his love for God, and he is a tremendous blessing. I, I connected with him immediately that Sunday service, and, and there's more to the story um, as we go along. But this guy, I would love for him to come, to come here one time and share his heart, but he, I, we're now Facebook friends. We're keeping in contact, so. San Diego. Keep going. All right. So this is my first job. Okay. This is, <laughs> the, you know, so Sunday, the, the honeymoon is over. And, and, and now they're putting me to work. We're building. So this is what we had to do. And, um, and there's Dan in, in, the, in the army jacket there. And this is the dining hall. So, so this is the dining hall. So the, where we are now is, is in the school. There's a local school in the area, and uh, Missionary Dan, what he does is he goes around in the area, and he sees where the needs are. And, it, you know, it's not just building his camp. He's building homes in the community, and one of the areas he saw the need was this school needs to have a place where kids can eat their lunch or eat their food. And so this dining hall was built for that school uh, to help that uh, possibility. Behind that is the washroom, so you can see that, that, that structure. That is the washroom. Now, you see that white stuff on the wall? Um, that is uh, parge or parchment, or what, I can't remember the proper name, but, but um, this is what had to come off, and under it is the bricking. And it took us about a half day to, to clean all of that, that uh, white stuff off the wall you know, with, with a hammer and a, and a chisel and, and some bruised thumbs, all right? So, so I was doing that. <clears throat> for a lot of the time, and, and, and this young man um, was helping me named Miguel, and he just, he, he's, a, he's a kid, he was a young kid, and he wasn't supposed to be helping because he's not paid or anything. Some of the people there that are paid, but Dan, one of the things that Dan does, missionary Dan does, is he creates employment uh, down there when he does these houses, and he pays, uh, he takes some of his money, and he pays these guys to help them build these houses, so it gives a, an opportunity for them to, to, to have some money and, and build the economy in the area, so it's great. So, But this young kid who, who uh, lives in the camp came to where we were and was hanging out, and he was just there one day and just picked up the chisel and started helping me knocking, knocking, uh, knocking some stuff off, and you can see the workers complaining in Spanish to them, you know, I don't know what they're saying, but he's saying, come down from there, you're not, you're not supposed to be doing that, but he's going up. He's pointing to me, and he's speaking in Spanish. I'm, it's like he's saying, I'm helping him. You know? <laughs> I was so moved. I was like, this kid is, like, cool, you know? <laughs> Come on now. Get some young people like that. Show up at some job, you know, to start working. And the, the boss says, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be working here, you know? But I want to work, you know what I mean? And that was Miguel. I was so moved by Miguel. I don't know if I have a picture of him. I, I, I got a hat, that I, a nice little hat that I wore down throughout my time there. At the end of my time, I told Miguel, because you helped me, this is your hat. This is your hat. So, so um, he was touched at the end and, and got all teary-eyed. And a uh, great young man. He's a teenager still. Thank God for that. So, so this, is, um, this is the dining hall. Those white bags there is the glue that we have to mix with water to, to, to make the... Um, to stack the bricks on top of each other. So, so we're going to keep going through. It's a picture. So, so there, there, there are the bricks. You see them? And the gray stuff, the gray stringy stuff is the glue. So this is how we're building these. Uh, you can see how we're building the bricks around the structure. Okay, so keep going. All right. Um, this is Pastor Chatham. This is Pastor Chatham. Those of you who know Pastor Chatham, Pastor Chatham from the Collingwood Church, he came and spoke here last, uh, last year, and he is actually leading this whole mission trip from Collingwood, and here he is kind of getting us set up uh, in the job. So I said, he's at, he's at work. He's not just a man of talk, he's a man of work, 
I'm going to talk more about that later on. <clears throat> so here he is getting a set up. So keep going. Oh, so you can see the walls getting higher. All right. And uh, learned a lot about bricking. Brother Herod's not here, but he'd be smiling, you know. But uh, I think I can brick a house now. So I might go look for a job. I'm pretty good now. <laughs> yeah, I bring my glue bag and ready to go. So, um, so you can see the wall is getting higher. Okay, keep going. Wall is getting higher. <laughs> I'm taking pictures as we. This is the team. You can see in the background. Um, Zach is here. Liz is in the background, and a few other folks. Um, that was my team. I worked with it that week. Great bunch of people. Um, one of the things that the mission trip did for me is it really got me to meet, connect, make connections with people um, that you know I think will last beyond the mission trip. Um, Detroit is already waiting for us to come and worship with them. And if they're passing by, they know to come here. And, and, and likewise in Collingwood, when I go for my timeshare vacation in, in uh, November, um, I think they already have a, a, a home and, and a place where everybody's going to come to make food for us so, so we can reconnect uh, in Collingwood. But um, it's just a w great way to meet new people and build relationships in a way that you... It felt, it felt like you've known them for a long time, but it was just this, a week or two, and, and it's, the relationships are solid. It's amazing. All right, let's keep going. All right, so uh, now we had, we had some people painting the, the structures there because we didn't want it to rust. Ladies were painting, so we keep going. All right, more glue and brick. Keep going. So we, oh, yeah, let me go back. So this is our, go back. You see these ladders? This is our scaffolding, okay? This is the sophisticated scaffolding. Basically, two ladders on either side and a plank of wood in the middle, and we just raise it up as we need to go up higher. So, And, and the ground was bumpy, so we had to put rocks on the ladders to make sure that it's stable. It was wild. <laughs> <laughs> this is a deacon. I can't remember his name. That was a deacon from the Detroit church. And, um, so we're starting to build up more, so keep going. I'm showing you how this, this is taking a, uh, um, a week to do. I'm showing it all in one, one slide and one time here, but it's taking time to do all this. Keep going through. So now we're getting, so these are, these are the trestles, I think they called it, um, where they're getting ready to put the roof on. So they, they had a welder. So one of the trades that is valuable in Paraguay is a welding. And, uh, and so the trade school that we're resurrecting uh, there down there, one of the buildings we're resurrecting, one of the trades they're going to be teaching the kids is welding. So once they have that trade, they can pick up jobs. So Paraguay, is, if you didn't know, is going through a huge construction boom. The building buildings and the, pri the prime minister that is there, or the, the guy in charge, he's putting a lot of money into infrastructure. So, um, so because of that... Uh, because it doesn't snow there, or doesn't have uh, winter there, ants and termites take advantage of the wood. So you don't want to build a lot of structure with wood. So what they have to do is, is build with brick and steel or metal. And, and that way, you're, you're, when you have a house or building with that, you know it's going to withstand the, the insect infestation. So, so they're welding um, these metal, metal um, trussles onto the, the beams before they put the, the, the roof on. So... This is a welder, um, well-known welder, and he, this welder that is welding it, um, he is going to be the main instructor in the trade school once it's uh, complete. So, great, 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 great work happening. So they're getting the other side on. Keep going. All right, so we're just keep flashing through, showing you this dining hall. All right, and. Um, so this, this is, this, yeah, who is that guy? <laughs> Just me standing around, eh? Come on, telling, <laughs> telling uh, Missionary Dan what to do. Actually, you know, I never tied a knot. You know, like, you know, you know, you have, you know, experience tying knots and boats. And I was having struggle just tying this thing to the. So I said, you need to show me this. So here is Missionary Dan showing me. Now I'm a professional knot tire, okay? You need to tie anything down in your car. Call me, I'll take care of it. Okay, there are some tricks I have learned. And I'm set up. Come on, I'm, I'm, you hire me now. Come on, I'm ready. <laughs> and I put on some muscle, man. I was like, 
we worked from eight. Uh, we we worked from about eight in the morning, and we finished about five thirty. Yeah, uh, five thirty in the in the in the evening every day, Monday to Friday. So when we came, oh my goodness, we were tired. I just hit the shower, get some meal, get a meal, and barely have a few conversations. And and I felt it felt it was twelve midnight. You know, it's time to go to bed. And when I look at my clock, it's eight thirty. <laughs> Because it gets dark earlier there, and uh, as soon as the dark comes, you just want to go to bed, you know. So I go to bed 8.30 and then 9 o'clock, and I'm waking up 3 o'clock, can't sleep. It's like, what's going on? So, so here is Missionary Dan. This is, this is um, rebar. So what they do is they build up the buildings to a certain height, and then when we get on top of the doors and the windows, they rebar with mortar and brick around the, the area to kind of hold everything together. And, and so I had to cut up this rebar. And now we're getting ready to transport it to the various buildings. I was struggling tying it down. So here is Dan. And this is not Dan. This is Pastor Dan, actually, um, showing me how to do it. So <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> um, so let's keep going. Um, so here is one of the things we were surprised in seeing. We're building this dining hall. and There's an area where we were storing the, the concrete and all that stuff. And, and, and we kind of bumped into this, 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 this meat. On top of the, you know, so at the beginning of the, the week, we heard this cow mooing. Moo. You know, we heard it. It was, it, these, these, no shame. Moo. And then one day we didn't hear the cow. <laughs> and we bumped into that and we saw this and we said, oh, that's where the cow went. <laughs> I was like, we were shocked. I was like, what is that? You know, I was like, oh. like they killed the cow. They skinned the cow, they cut it up, and they put it on the table. And apparently they were getting ready for a big party the next day. The school was having a huge lunch. Uh, a lady from the States came. And to buy a cow, it's like $3,000. It's $5,000 U.S. To, to buy a cow. She bought a cow, killed the cow, and, and we we're serving lunch. I think I have some pictures here. A, a kids' community program for the community. So this was the... The, the meat that they're about to cook the next day. And, you know, it's not kept in the fridge. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in this room overnight. <laughs> you, know, so we, you know, just pray for your food before you eat it. You know, just, Lord bless us. So here we go. So keep going. You can see the cement bag beside the cow meat there. So here they had a jumping castle. I was surprised they had a jumping castle. This was the picnic they did on the school ground where we were building the dining hall. So the kids came from the community and started to play. Keep going. Uh, here is some of the folks from the from the school um, that um, we took pictures with. Keep going. Um, here are some of the workers uh, from they're building the buildings from the from the mission. Keep going. We're taking a break, having some food. Um, some more of the workers there. This is uh, oh, come back. This is uh, if I can remember names. This is John. That's John on the on my on this side. And then we have um, uh, Justin and Daniel in the red shirt. And this is one of the, um, Sophia, I believe her name is, from the, from the community, from the campground, one of the teens from the campground. We're having a great time. Keep going. Uh, this is the cow. <laughs> so this is what ended up on my table for lunch. So I just, you know, lift it up to the Lord. And prayed Israel that it was a Christian cow. <laughs> and I took a bite and it was good. You know, noodles and cow, you know, noodles and meat. You know, my first experience of Paraguayan dish. Praise the Lord. I, I asked some of the folks from the missions, did you like it? And some couldn't comment. You know, they just, because they didn't need it. So I was like, you didn't need it? It's like, what do you need? <laughs> it was wild. All right, keep going. Got to run too quick. Here's another. This guy is a professor. They, the teacher is there. They call professor. So he's one of the teachers at the school. Keep going. All right, there I. So just to prove that I wasn't just standing around there, I was working. I was doing some bricking, you know. All right, keep going. It was hot. The suns were hot. There me smiling there. Okay, keep going. All right, keep going. So here you can see now the 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 bricking is done there, and. About to put the roofing on. Keep going. All right, here's one of the workers the, that lived there. 
one of the guys I was really touched by. We, it was amazing how the language barriers is. We're trying to talk and we can't communicate and we only can use sign language. So I learned a few things, you know. Hola is hello, you know. And kamastas, how are you doing? And muy ben, muy ben, doing very well, doing good. You know, most things I just say muy ben and, and mas, uno mas, one more, one more, uno mas. Or no mas, no mas, no more in terms of the, the mortar and stuff like that. So it was, you guys work hard. Keep going. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Okay. Right there. Okay. So, so, so in my, in my, in my, uh, I told you about Sante, right? Santiago. He, he, me and him struck a chord. So that week he came up to the, um, work site and he asked me so now we're, we're he's got a phone translator and he's translating on his phone speaking in Spanish and then I get it in English so I, I downloaded it so now we're communicating through this phone app to speak to each other and he invites me to, to, to his home for lunch and I'm going you want me to come to your home and have dinner I mean have lunch so I know now those of you who don't know you're not supposed to drink the water in Paraguay because it can make you sick so I'm, I'm kind of beside myself going, should I go? And then, and then the folks in the mission, my team going, yeah, go ahead, go, it's good. Yeah, they're, they're not going, but they're telling me, yeah, go ahead, it's good, go. It's like, you know, so I'm trying to process this, Lord, what do I do right now? I don't want to get sick, you know. And, and, and um, so I call, mission, I call missionary Dan and let him know the situation. And I was hoping he would say, you know what, no, I think you should stay back and work. And, but he said, yeah, man, go ahead. It's like, oh, <laughs> I don't want to be rude. So I said, you know what? It looks like we get to go, so we're going. And further, further, furthermore, he comes. So I asked, how are we getting there? And he, bikes are what, the, dirt bikes is what they, is the main trans, mode of transportation because the roads are bad. So, so I'm figuring, you know, Kyle said he's coming. Kyle is, is Dan's son. He's, he's one of, one of the, that's the, the, the children that, of Dan that lives down there with him, helping him out. So. I heard that Dan, Kyle was going to be there to help me interpret between the family. So I figured Kyle was going to help me get there on a truck or, so, or on one of the vehicles, but, but didn't see Kyle, and, and Sante was ready to take me, and, and he was telling me to get on the back of the bike. So I said, okay, we are going to the back of the bike, and here I am, two big men on the back of the bike, and we're going through the city, the town, the highway, and we're bumping around, and we, we get to his house, and it was... And I, without a helmet, yeah, you know, no, no kind of safety regulation going on, you know. And so I am, I'm taking this journey, holding on tight. No, actually, I wasn't holding on tight. I was holding on like a man, you know. I didn't put my hand around his waist. I just put it on top, you know, just, just you know, trying to look cool, trying to look cool. <laughs> so there, <laughs> trying to look cool. <laughs> so, so, so I end up at his house, and we have this this meal. And of all the meals that she makes, she makes soup. <laughs> I'm thinking in my head, am I going to be able to eat this? And then the mother asks, can you eat our food? So I just said, you know, I don't know, but we'll pray and see what happens. <laughs> so here I am. We prayed. And we start eating. I start eating. Nothing's happening. And, and, and you know what? The food was actually good. <laughs> it actually tasted like our, our, our provision, provision. Yes, cassava. <laughs> I think I was there, but what I'm saying, the cassava. Jamaicans know about cassava, right? So it's like their national dish. Like we have ackee and saltfish, our national dish. Cassava is their national dish. So they never have a meal without the cassava. And it's not, it's very good because he invited me to... to, to I'm coming to you just now. So, so cassava, there's some corn, corn dumpling there and some chicken. And then he, he, he said that they killed the chicken and had eggs in the chicken. So he said, do you want some of my eggs? So he takes his spoon out of his soup and he gives it to me. And so I'm going, Lord, 
you know, sure, yeah, put it in. And I taste it. And it was actually pretty good. It tastes like egg yolk. So, you know, but then after they had some juice and it was beautiful, but they had a beautiful um, fruit dish, fruit salad that they kept outside in a bucket of ice. So, and, and I, I tried it and it's like, oh my goodness, this is, we had some king's food here. And it was a beautiful, beautiful time we had together. And I was so great. I was, I was, I was hesitant at the beginning, but I was so grateful to go and eat the food. I didn't get sick, praise the Lord, and um, had a wonderful time getting to meet Santiago's parents and whatnot. We, we, we had a wonderful prayer and all that stuff. Let's keep going. Here's the family. So this is Santiago's brother here on this side, here um, on the mother on the other side. Uh, Santiago is beside his mother, and that's Kyle. Pastor Chatham, our missionary Dan, uh, son, who's the interpreter, and, and some of the kids. This little girl over here fell in love with me as soon as I walked into the house. So I've adopted her. Yeah, Santiago's niece. Yeah, so beautiful family. All right, keep going. And here's me. So after the dinner, he didn't want to let me go. He not only drove me to the site back to work, but he also drove me to church after I was a part of the... I got part of the worship team to play bass guitar, bass guitar there. So it was a fun experience. To, so we're having a worship practice, and he drove me to the church for worship practice. We really developed a, a close relationship. Keep going. Here is um, a kitchen. Um, this is kind of the kitchen that we're dealing with here in Paraguay. That's stove, uh, oven, but this is kind of what they're cooking in. This is their environment they're cooking in. You can see a lot of the dirt that is surrounding the area. You can see the broom that they're using to sweep up and stuff like that. Very poor conditions. Keep going. Um, this is sewage. Okay? So we're, this is what happens. They, they have an outhouse. This house particular, some houses they have better outhouses, but this house, all the sewage runs through a, gu a gully down, and, it's, and chickens and things are walking around. We just had to look at that and say, wow, this is just crazy how people are living here. Um, so keep going. This is one of the houses we started to build that first week. And, um, and so just kind of give you the size of the house we're building. Keep going. Uh, this is the trade center. So now you can go, not the trade center, the school. The pictures that I showed you from that, the beginning of the slide, they're putting the roof on. Just giving you a picture of it. Keep going. Inside, you can see the kind of roof they're putting on, those uh, metal sheets. Keep going. Uh, another picture of the um, of the house. So this is the house. You can see this wooden house on this side here, at the background with the ladder there. That's what they're living in. It's worse than Gilligan's Island's house. It's just wood and a little bit of straw on top of it. Very, very poor conditions there. So this new house, the bricked house, is replacing that one. Keep going. Okay, and um, that same week we were also... We had a team that was building foundations. So we're not just putting brick on top of ground. They put about a six-inch uh, layer of cement to make sure that no bugs come in through the bottom of the house. And this is a team that's pouring the cement to do that. Keep going. So there's another picture of the house, how, how rough that house is. Keep going. Um, this is our worship uh, concert we did the Friday, the first week of the Friday. Um, where I got to play with the, t the band, and they did a drama presentation for the community. And all the people in blue are the folks that were um, uh, on the mission. We had about 61 people, missionaries, on this trip. 61 missionaries. Keep going. Week two. All right, go ahead. All right, so I'm going to let Sister Davy come and share. This is where I met Sister Davy. So, so, so she was supposed to be with us for two weeks, but due to complications, she only came for the one week. And, and, and the second week. And so when she came, I met her when we were pouring the big slab um, of, of cement uh, for the trade school. And it took a number of people to do that. And there were all kinds of like, young people, elderly people were working hard. One thing I learned about this mission trip is that the people who came love to work. Journey community know how to work hard. And they just work hard, and they do it for people. But I'm going to give Sister Davy a chance to um, share her piece before I continue. Come up, Sister Davy.
Okay. Don't act shy, Sister Davy. You weren't shy on the mission trip, so come on. It is, um, let me talk my, the worst part first. What's going on? Yeah, I got a list what I should have taken with me. Anyway, I got a list that I should buy some bug repellent. So I went to Home Depot and I asked as dealer. Tell me, show me what to use. When I went, somebody tell me to buy. I got some bug repellent. So I took the bought this stuff. So I prayed over my suitcase. I heard that I was my Lord. So I prayed over everything and I tell God to cover all my stuff with his blood and don't let me lose anything. So when I went one night we were in the camp. It's a big camp. It's bunk beds. Everybody, it's a camp. So if you're planning to go, it's a camp. You can do as you like. You have to follow camp rules. You have to get up in the morning for breakfast and devotion. We have to start out for work and we can't go anywhere. We have to do work to go to the people's um, place. It's like Jamaicans, you know, when you go three miles, shocks. It's shocks, board, a little plastic over it. It's like um, maybe three, four kids, mother and father in one. Sure, you know shocks and trees, Jamaicans. It's very poor condition. In the in the town, nice. But in the rural area where we go, the people are so they need houses, they need food, they need clothes. And so one night in the camp, the camp it does seem like your nice house. The camp. When we went the first time, it was cold, freezing. As Pastor Dan said, winter just finished. Yeah, winter is my July. And so two days it was. And so one day when I went and did to work with them, I was normally minding my That's what they could have. And I was so cold. I had on a jacket and I wrapped my neck. And here my scarf and wrapped my neck. Plastic and what will do. Then after that, it started. But I came back. Anyway, so you have to get up, get dressed. So the night now, I heard some of the, the folks saying, bugs, bugs coming in. And when you look at the door and say, bugs, bugs, bugs. So I ran to my suitcase and I grab one of this. And I, and, I, and, and I started praying and it wasn't doing anything. And I went and I grabbed another spray. That's friends, friends. And when I went outside in the middle of the night, when I look, it was bug nest, nest right along. So they didn't trust me. They didn't believe me. But my spray was working. So they went and called Pastor Chatham. When Pastor Chatham come and look at my spray, he said, you brought this on the plane? I said, yes. He said, this spray is, you should not put it on the plane. But you know what? God knew that it needed the bugs needed. So he made me bring everything. <laughs> anyway, anyway, it was it was exciting. You have some of the picture there to show. And we, we had to put up bricks. So Pastor Dan's Pastor Chatham, right? And his son, 17. He, he and I was team. Oh my God, that guy. He was you know, all of us, we were so respectful to each other. That's what. And in the camp, you didn't hear anybody criticizing anybody. Everybody just and worked together. And I'm telling you, not only our church, other denomination, friends chipping and putting money, they brought stuff. Then the thing is, they said, don't bring arms, so we should bring arms, snack. I bought some crackers, I bought some little uh, sardines. When I went on the plane, they took away my... I had to give some of people some of my stuff. Because I, when I travel normally, when I travel all the time, I go on the plane. I go on WestJet. If I have two carry-on, WestJet allow me to take the two carry-on. I 
um, American Airlines, they are so strict. You can just carry one carry on with you. And they took away my sardines. That's all they took away. 13 years. Everything was. <laughs> and so it was exciting. We had. We had Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. She also brought curry goat and. Was it? Was it? My chicken. Yo, you're, 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 yeah, you're, yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. So, so she, she, she did some things here. I brought my food. I brought my food. So the camp life now, you have to eat. But I have high blood pressure. I can't eat salt, and they put salt in everything. Every day you get something sweet to eat. They feed you on the camp. I'm telling you, they fed you. It wasn't lack of food. They said, drink the water and the can. So they have a thing named Teddy Dates. Culture. A little. I, I, I think like a goat. And it's, a man, it's friendly. Water in there. And they give everybody. You have to drink. I don't drink anything. I don't think about that. Drug. But I bought one. I bought one so I can carry it and show you. It's like a goat. It's a anger. You put the water in it. You buy the so when I was coming back now, I saw fever grass. Anybody know that fever grass is excellent for fever when you have fever? So I saw the, the root, so I asked Kyle, I said, can I get a root? He said, yes. But when I was coming now, I'm going to bring it. When I was coming now, one lady said, oh, you can't carry anything. You can't carry anything. So I was going to stubbornly bring it because when I got to Kenya, I got to Bahamas, they said, you can't carry anything. I mean, my suitcase, and when me come, nobody knows what I mean. The pastor said to me, Sister David, Muriel, I don't bring anything. So, you know, I know no problem. But it was exciting, and I would say, let me tell you something. Young people, you are in, everybody, you are in your quiet, cozy corner. What other people are, are experiencing. And when we go and do it, we do it unto the Lord, you know? And something one writer said, all the vain things that charms me most, sacrifice them to his blood. If we would sacrifice some of those nice television programs, some of those nice things, the little they have, when we do it to, the, to them, we do it unto them. Amen. Amen. That is so true, Sister David. I, I learned so much about Sister David. She's going to be in our, our leadership um, team uh, after I seen how she, uh, they, she was moving the youth there. The youth said they wanted her to come back home and be their, be their um, youth leader. That's how much she was inspiring the teens there. I, I was blown away. I, I was sitting in the van, and Sister David was teaching them songs, and the kids loved it. And all I could say is, I don't know this person. <laughs> And they're cracking up because they're going, you didn't know she was like this? Not at all. <laughs> but it was a great time. So let's go through quickly. So this is the um, trade center we were building the concrete for. Keep going. Okay, here is the band trip to, um, I think this was to the, the, the girls' home. It was a two-hour trip. And you can see Sister Davy there. And the girls, these are the girls that love Sister Davy. Okay, these are the girls. So let's keep going. All right. These are the two, some of the girls from the girls' home. That was such a special time where we were able to see, what the, see the girls, pray with the girls, hear their, their testimonies. These girls are anywhere between maybe uh, 10, 12, all the way up to in the teens. And when they gave their testimony, they're just giving God thanks for life, even though they've been through struggles and they don't have the life that we know. Um, they're giving God thanks for the life that they have. And, it was just amazing to see God working uh, in these young ladies. Keep going. All right, here's some more work we're doing for the house. Keep going. Do you see? Oh, go back. See, see, Sister Davy. She's not. She's she's right in the work. She is right in the work, getting her hands. She brought her gloves and ready to work. So she's min mixing the cement with uh, Will. I believe that is. Keep keep going. He's handing bricks to us, making sure we're good. So she's right in it. And, 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 you know, she's a senior. Come on now, somebody. She, I, I was surprised. <clears throat> I thought she was going to be in the kitchen, but no, she says she wants to work. So, yeah, she's the oldest one there. So. Good 
Oh, I got that on video. Don't worry about it. I got that on video. Do we do we do we have that video of the of the church van? Can you show that video? We won't play the sound, but there's her dance. This is her dancing, uh, praising God. That 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 I don't know what song you were singing, but yeah, about uh, one of the songs that she was singing in. <laughs> This is Sister Davy. I don't know. Come on. She's on the worship team. Come on now. Francine, pull her on the worship team. <laughs> okay, it was crazy. All right, let's go back. We gotta wrap this up. Let's go back to some of the keep going, keep going. This is the kid. Oh, this kid was so inspired by what we're doing, he took some of the rubble and started to build his own thing. So this is him, one of the kids there. Keep going. All right, um, what is this here? Oh, this was the new foundation we were building there. Keep going. All right, this is uh, Ricardo. So we came back from the kids' home, the, children, the girls' home, and we were, it was getting late, 8.30 around there, and, and, and it's dark. We stopped to get some food at some kind of sh um, place in the middle of the street. And we're outside kind of just talking and stuff like that. And we're, we get, we're getting our food, and this guy just comes up to me, and speaks in Spanish about Christiana. And I go, uh, no, 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 Espanol, no Espanol. And, and so Dan, Mission, Dan was there and he um, interpreted. Long story short, because we don't have time to get into it, but um, he asked me if I like Christian music. And I said, yeah, I do. He starts singing. And I, I'm a person that loves to hear singers. Like I watch The Voice, I watch American Idol. Like, Marsh and I will critique, you know, the voice, which one's the better. This guy had a voice that just made the hairs on the back stand up. It was that amazing. And so I said to him, you know, do you know Jesus? And he goes, he starts sharing a story how he used to be in the church, but he fell out of the church because of some challenges. And I said to him, you know, if you commit your life back to God and you use that voice, I won't be surprised that you will touch a lot of people in Paraguay and even beyond Paraguay. And by the time we were finished talking, I, um, Pastor Missionary Dan and Ricardo exchange numbers, and he um, is planning to visit the church. It's funny because we're on our way to the get the food. The couple, uh, Je Je Jesse, Jesse and, and Steve, are leaving. As I said, they're leaving to go back to North Carolina. And Missionary Dan was saying, "Well, the Lord will provide a worship leader to help us in the church." And and then I just just clicked. I said, "Maybe this is the guy." And Dan was saying that was a divine appointment appointment because what are the odds that we would stop at that location at that time for this guy to walk up to me and, and we just prayed for him. That's his son. And the last time I heard, Dan said he got a text from Ricardo um, the next week about the church. So I want you to pray for this guy because when I go back, I want to see Ricardo at church. I want to see him singing for the Lord. And he has a lovely son and, and God is doing a work in his life. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. So there is Sister Davy. She got on back of the bike. I can't believe it. She got on the back of the bike. <laughs> I was all scared, and here is she. No fear. Let's do it. When Santiago came to me and said, where is Esmeralda? Esmeralda. And she, what do you want her for? She wants to bring lunch. I go, I don't know. I don't know. She may, you know, I don't know how she's going to take the bike and the food. But by, by the time I spin around, she's, I was trying to take the picture, and they're off on the bike. <laughs> I can't believe I don't know her. I do not know. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So here is her mixing the glue. Keep going. We had a great time, church. You missed out. Here am I. Keep going. This is the hat that I gave to um, the, the young man. Keep going. It's the house we're building. We're going to go through this quick going quick. Here's some of the guys we're working with. Um, this is Pastor Chatham's son over here. That's John. Yeah, I got, got along well with um, Geralda. 17 years old. And he's so professional. For your, for your living. He said, I go to school. I'm just 17. That guy was so great. He was my, was my party all week. We had a lot of teens there. 
So, guys, I want the teens, guys, next time we go, youth, I want you going. we got to fundraise to make sure you can go because we played games I never played before, and I know you would have loved the – in the nights, we, we stayed up and we played card games, fellowship games. You would have loved it. And so I hope you can come next time. Keep going. All right, this is one of the homes we built, uh, the foundations here. So we didn't build the back home, but this is a, a person who is mentally handicapped uh, uh, who we were building a bigger home for, and he said, no, go for a smaller home. And this is the foundation that's poured. So our church is has one of, we, we sponsored four homes. This is one of the homes. So we're going to be, um, they, we had to leave, but they're going to be bricking up this back foundation, and, and this will be... Um, Part, part of their home, and this is from Abundant Life Gospel Center that will do this. And so we give God praise for that. <clears throat> so keep going. Um, this is what the home looks like when it's finished. So this is what we built. Just to give you a picture of what the home looks like. Okay, another picture. There's um, the front part of the home. Keep going. Um, this is the lady that got that particular home that you got. She just lost her, her child. And um, um, and so mourning, the very mourning her child, uh, who she gave birth to, this was a great gift to help encourage her. Keep going. So this this um, this is the home we built together, and this family that we were helping to build this home. Gonna wrap this. Up. This this family. This yeah. So this family was. So me and Merelda, the second week, we were on the same team. So, so we were building, and then this family was right in there helping us. They were giving us tete They were giving us juice. They were giving us water. They, they, were, they were just helping us with the bricking, and, and it was amazing. Not knowing that this was the home that was, we would be presenting later to be their home. So it really moved me that we got to meet the family before, not knowing that this was the home that we would be able to to um, touch, Sister Hill. Hot here. I bought it years ago, years ago. It's a nice warm hat. I bought it at, ju at a jewelry store, but I didn't like it. So I put it away in my, in my chest of jar where I keep my... So when I went there, I said, oh, this is a good hat to keep because I know that it's cold. So when a lady saw me in this hat, I didn't know anybody would like it. She fell in love with the hat. She said she wanted it. So she gave her the hat, and she loved it. She loved it. All right, keep going. we got to wrap this up. Quick one. This is the family. Remember that, the, the, ch the mentally challenged family? Um, this is the family here. And so we went to the, he was working when we were doing the presentation uh, at the home. So Dan drove us to where he works. This is the gentleman over here and his wife. And we did the presentation to, to that family, and, and they were very grateful. Keep going. Um, again, another bus ride together. Wonderful time. Keep going. This is uh, the team T-shirts. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Time is against. This is the soccer that the uh, um, mission, um, the mission team versus the uh, the the local soccer uh, professionals. So soccer is huge back there, and so unfortunately, the mission team lost four to two. Didn't win, but uh, it was a great, great effort. Keep going. This is uh, one of my young friends that uh, I met there. He, he's just adorable. Uh, great guy. Keep going. This happened near the end of our stay there when we were just kind of wrapping up on a Friday, and I was talking to a, a small family that was there, and I asked if I could pray with them. And before you know it, that circle turned into a huge circle that you can see it. And I ended up praying for all those people that were there in the community. It was just a, a very amazing spiritual experience um, that was there. The people there were so grateful, so happy. You know, you know, here we live in huge homes, and they're getting a small 10 by 10 foot home, and they are ecstatic about what they're getting. Church, we have something to give God praise for, and, and the opportunity that we can give back and know that what we give is something that is valued is amazing. We're going to wrap this up here. Keep going. This is the t t team, the mission team, part of the mission team at the end of our stay. You can see uh, this is Sandy that's having a great time. Keep going. And uh, then we had a little bit of tourism, so we went to buy some stuff. 
Yeah, happy to leave. Keep going. And I was tired. <laughs> I was done. Keep going. So they were playing jokes on me. And this is like, this is a literal picture on our way um, to the airport, the sunrise. And um, it was just a beautiful scenery. I had to take a picture. Go ahead. Is there one more? Is that it? Have we done? Is that it? All right, so that's all I have to share, and Merlda has to share. But one thing I want to just leave with you as we close, um, we won't have time to do the Lord's Supper today. We'll do it next week, Sunday. Um, but one thing that I'll leave with you as we close is the thought here in Matthew 25, 31 to 36, where Jesus said, when I was hungry, you, you, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me thirst. Um, when I was needed clothes, you didn't clothe me. And, but those of you that did do that you, to the least of these, those of you that did do it to the least of the, these, you've done it unto me. And, and, the, and, the, and the whole idea behind the mission trip that I've learned is it's not enough just to help people. Now, a lot of times we help people out of our convenience. You know, We help people out of our convenience. But God says that's a not enough to help people. You've got to help people out of your inconvenience. One of the things I learned at the mission trip, I wasn't comfortable there because it didn't feel like my home when I went to bed. You know, it didn't feel like my home when I'm eating the food. It didn't feel like my home when I'm driving in the car and I'm bouncing off my seat. You know, but God valued that because it was out of my inconvenience, out of Sister Davy's inconvenience, that when we help people, he moves mightily. And I just want us to remember that as we are doing work here in Abundant Life Gospel Center, that it's not enough just to help out of convenience, you know. I'm going to do it as long as it benefits me. we got to change that mentality. we gotta, we got to sometimes say, you know what, I will do it even if it inconveniences me and still have a joy on my face to do it. And I believe when we have that kind of attitude, then we are actually helping the people that are least than us. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus came out of his comfortable heaven to live in an uncomfortable world and to bring the gospel to us in a way that was amazing and powerful. And so if Jesus did it for us, let us continue to do it for others. Amen? There's so much more to say, but I'm going to cut it there. And I just hope, I, I know there's a few people near the end uh, when we were getting down to the wire of leaving that said they wanted to, to come. Uh, and I told you next time, I'm, I'm anticipating next trip that we have, which will probably be in a couple of years to Paraguay. If we do, if we do go this year, it, uh, next year, it will probably be for teaching. But the next big mission trip, which will be for building, will probably won't be in a couple of years. Um, so, but I'm pretty sure we're going to have more than just two of us that are going down uh, from this church, that we'll have a whole team of people. And so um, I'm looking forward to what God has in store and, and all the great things that he's doing. The, the, last, the last Sunday that we missed, um, they were able to come together and do an amazing uh, um, service and party and celebration, barbecue and everything. And I heard that they had over 200 people in attendance from the community. And so we just give God praise for what he's doing. And I know when we go back, we're going to see the church growing and blooming. They're building dorms for students. That missionary Dan is building dorms for students who are going to school down there, and that's going to be connected to the church building. So God is doing some amazing things in the community. Continue to pray for the community. Church, thank you for the work that you, uh, uh, the, the, the donations and the prayers that you have done to make this possible. And we just give God all the praise. Amen.